Good morning and welcome to our devotion as we start out a new week with our Monday morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. May 7th is the day of commemoration for CFW Walter, uh, or we usually say Walther in the United States. Um, CFW Walter, a very influential figure in American Lutheranism, often called the American Luther. Uh, he was a um, major player in the founding of the Missouri Synod, and let's read about his life. Carl Ferdinand Wilhelm Volter, 1811 to 1887, the founder of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, served as its first president from 1847 to 1850, and then again from 1864 to 1878. In 1839, he emigrated from Saxony, Germany, with other Lutherans who settled in Missouri. He served as pastor of several congregations in St. Louis, founded Concordia Seminary, and in 1847 was instrumental in the formation of the LCMS, then called the Evangelical Lutheran Synod of Missouri, Ohio, and other states. Uh, Walter worked tirelessly to promote confessional Lutheran teaching and doctrinal agreement among all Lutherans in the United States. He was a prolific writer and speaker. Among his most influential works are the, our church and ministry, and the proper distinction between law and gospel. And so uh, maybe from our perspective, we would, we would emphasize also that he was, he and the Missouri Synod at the time were instrumental in forming the Synodical Conference of Lutheran Synods, of which uh, ELS and Wells were part, and, and also the Slovak Synod. And so of course, the, the Synodical Conference broke up in the late 50s and early 60s. We're familiar with that history. Um, that's where our little synod originated. Um, the Slovak Synod stayed in fellowship with Missouri Synod and eventually was absorbed into the Missouri Synod as a non-geographic district. ELS and Wells remained separate synods, but in fellowship. And now we, we have the CLC as a different synod, different fellowship. Um, one thing you might also, so we've been reading from, from Walter on a, many of our morning devotions from a, I have the book right here called God Grant It, um, daily devotions from CFW Walter. And these are sermon excerpts from, from his sermons. Um, but, uh, the other work for which he is known, and I am not prepared today, if you'll give me a second, I'm going to grab it off my shelf. But the other work for which he is known, you might have read about in the Lutheran Spokesman recently. And I mentioned it in, when I read about his life a moment ago. It's called The Proper Distinction Between Law and Gospel. And this book, I have it now. This was, um, the, the version I have is an old blue edition. But it's been in the Lutheran Spokesman. I think we're still working through it um, in the Lutheran Spokesman. Um, but each, each month you'll find a excerpt from this book dealt with, but this book was a series of evening lectures where CFW Walter would meet, I think in his office, he would just be sitting at his desk and the students would gather around and he would just casually lecture them on, on the, the, the teachings of law and gospel and how to apply them pastorally. And, um, it, it must've been a really interesting and great experience for those young men preparing for the ministry. But I thought today we would read a portion of this, of this work. This is, I, I would, his church and ministry is well known and influential, but I've got to assume law and gospel is, is far better known. And, and it's, it's, it's a standard seminary text in many Lutheran seminaries. I, I don't know if it's read all the way through in our seminary or not, but I certainly was required to read, read the whole work. Um, at Bethany Seminary in Mankato. So just for, for just to give you a taste of this work and of kind of uh, 
Walter's character, I thought we would start with the first evening lecture on page five in the book. And, and by the way, this was not written down by Walter. He spoke and the students took notes. And what you have published here is just compiled from the student notes. Um, but this, this was uh, his comments in the first evening lecture on September 12th, 1884. My dear friends, if you are to become efficient teachers in our churches and schools, it is a matter of indispensable necessity that you have a most minute knowledge of all doctrines of the Christian revelation. However, having achieved such knowledge, you have not yet attained all that is needed. What is needed over and above your knowledge of the doctrines is that you know how to apply them correctly. You must not only have a clear appreciation of the doctrines in your intellect, but all of them must have entered deeply into your heart and there manifested their divine heavenly power. All these doctrines must have become so precious, so valuable, so dear to you that you cannot but profess with a glowing heart in the words of Paul, we believe, therefore we have spoken. And in the words of all the apostles, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. You have indeed not seen these things with your physical eyes or heard them with your physical ears like the apostles, but you ought to have an experience of them through your spiritual eyes and ears. While in my dogmatic lectures I aim to ground you in every doctrine and make you certain of it, I have designed these evening lectures on Fridays for making you really practical theologians. I wish to talk the Christian doctrine into your very hearts, enabling you in your future calling to come forward as living witnesses with a demonstration of the spirit and of power. I do not want you to stand in your pulpits like lifeless statues, but to speak with confidence and with cheerful courage, offer help where help is needed. Now of all doctrines, the foremost and most important is the doctrine of justification. However, immediately following upon it, as second in importance, is this, how law and gospel are to be divided. The distinction between the law and the gospel shall now claim our attention and form the subject of our earnest study. True, Luther says that he is willing to place him who is well versed in the art of dividing law from the gospel at the head of all and call him a doctor of holy writ. But I would not have you believe that I intend to place myself ahead of everybody else and be regarded as a doctor of the sacred scriptures. That would be a great mistake. I admit that people sometimes call me a doctor of theology, but for myself, I rather wish to remain a humble disciple and sit at the feet of our Dr. Luther to learn this doctrine from him, even as he learned it from the apostles and prophets. As often as you attend these lectures, I want you to come breathing a silent prayer in your hearts that God may grant us his Holy Spirit abundantly. You to the end that you may profitably hear, me to the end that I may teach effectively. Let us then take up our task with firm confidence that God will bless both our own souls and the souls of those whom we are to rescue. Comparing Holy Scripture with other writings, we observe that no book is apparently so full of contradictions as the Bible, and that not only in minor points, but in the principal matter, in the doctrine of how we may come to God and be saved. In one place, the Bible offers forgiveness to all sinners. In another place, forgiveness of sins is withheld from all sinners. In one passage, a free offer of life everlasting is made to all men. In another, men are directed to do something themselves towards being saved. This riddle is solved when we reflect that there are in the scriptures two entirely different doctrines, the doctrine of the law and the doctrine of the gospel. And so that was a small taste of the proper distinction between law and gospel as we consider this morning C.F.W. Walter, theologian. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, 
our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we also pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you again for joining us for our devotion. The Lord be with you until we meet again.